Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I love this place. Ame me encanta este lugar. It's so infectious with the Spirit of God. Surely this is Easter morning. We celebrate globally, and you are in a spirit-filled church, and to be honest with you, I feel the Spirit of God. It touches, amen. It soothes, it repairs, it mends, and you are in the right place. I'm a little partial, but you are in the right place. I welcome all of you, those of you that are streaming online. God bless you for utilizing technology. You couldn't be here. Beautiful, wonderful crowd I see here this morning on Easter, and I'm glad you're here, and you are welcome. Together, we move forward, and together, God orchestrates and orders our steps, and you are a part of what God is doing and this local assembly, to all of you that are visiting and maybe you were here yesterday, what an incredible time we had yesterday. Amen. Good job. Great people. Amen. We had a great, great time. And so I just welcome you. While you're standing, let me just kind of get right into the, to the word here. The Gospel of Luke, what is noteworthy, there's four Gospels. But all four Gospels record or write, escribe, the story of Easter morning. Now, every story in the Gospel is not shared by all four writers that made it to the Bible. But I thought what was so significant to me that this story is so profound, all four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said, hey, I'm going to write it. I happen to be reading from Luke chapter 24, Luke's writings. Easy to read version, easy to understand. I like the storyline sometimes with the easy to read version. And when you're a public reader, it's easier to read too. I don't think that's why they named it that way, but nevertheless. Let me read to you. Every very early Sunday morning, the woman came to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They brought the sweet-smelling spices they had prepared. They saw that the heavy stone had covered the entrance, had been rolled away. They went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They did not understand this. They were wondering about it. Two men in shining clothes stood beside them. The women were very afraid. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. The men said to them, here's the takeaway. Why are you looking for the living, the living person here? This is a place for dead people. Jesus is not here. Someone shout that. Jesus. Mm. He has risen from the dead. Wow. That's the tone of this whole day. He has risen from the dead. With the help of the Lord, I want to encourage you, I want to inspire you from this thought, a fresh start. Heavenly Father, help me once again on a beautiful Easter morning in Southern California that I would speak to lives and homes, marriages and minds and spirits, God, that the Spirit would lead me, Lord, not my words, not my thoughts, but I pray that you would flow through me with no obstructions from humanity, Speak to the hearts and the ears of this place, God. We honor you. We rejoice. We thank you for your presence we felt this far. But now, God, I pray that you'd get personal with us, personal with our families, our lives, our situations. Let me be a part of that today. In Jesus' name, if you receive it, would you shout amen? Amen. 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 God bless you for standing. You may be seated this morning. A fresh start. Authorities at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach 
seized more than 13,500 counterfeit luxury items that arrived in a shipment from China. U.S. Customs and Border Protection officials announced the shipment was seized on November the 9th, 2021, contained fake Chanel, Fendi, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Yves Saint Laurent bags and clothing items. If marketed as genuine, the haul could have sold for over a combined retail price of $30 million. A low price doesn't mean it's smart to buy, warns the public service announcement. Counterfeiters may use false reviews to obtain an unfair advantage over legitimate businesses tricking you into buying fake, defective, and or dangerous products. I read that article and I thought a little bit about the way the world has become. We're living in the 21st century and the world has always tried to counterfeit the things of God, the kingdom of God. The enemy can only offer forgeries, fakes, or knockoff products or options to compete with God. There's always a second option when it comes to the world or the enemy. Again, I'm dating myself, so I apologize. Even though I just had a birthday, I don't receive it. I reject it in Jesus' name. In fact, let me just, you know what? As you get my age, you start giving the birthdays to the grandkids. Honey, you have two birthdays this year. So when you're really 11, you're really 16 because I gave you mine along the way. But I remember, huh? and I sound like my dad now, when we used to call, we get out of school for Easter break. Now what's it called? Spring break. The world has replaced the tomb, obviously, with the Easter bunny. Christmas has turned into the most significant commercial time of the year. And you know as well as I do, they call it Xmas instead of Christmas. And they've taken the Christ out of Christmas. Now, I'm not suggesting that we do away with all of this, but I am saying to Keep your heart set on the original meaning and purpose of these seasons. Everything started with God. It is the original. It is the gold standard. It is the plumb line or the reference point of how we live and how we move forward. The world tries to disguise things. They try to rename things. They try to replace things. They try to do away with things. But Easter, we know as Christians and we know as Americans, hey, this is about a tomb. This is about a crucifixion. This is about a body that ladies ran to and there was no body there and the angels spoke to them. This is about something bigger than an Easter bunny and bigger than Easter eggs and bigger than what the world has done. But we understand there's something about the tomb. Hello, somebody. There's something about a fresh start. There's something about starting over. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you should use the things of this world without letting them become important to you. This is how you should live because this world, the way it is now, will soon be gone, end quote from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I want to tell somebody this morning that Easter is about a resurrection. It's about a Calvary and a stone being rolled away. It's about 50 days after Easter that came the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we call the day of Pentecost. Easter is about the power of God, the Spirit of God living inside of us. I want to tell you that God wants to reside in your home. His Spirit wants to be in you. He wants to be a part of you. What is Easter? It's a time for a brand new fresh start. Someone say a fresh start. start. It's about the new birth. It's about repentance. It's about baptism. It's about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I realize that I'm speaking, I'm preaching to people in the church today that probably know God and about you know his power. And maybe you feel like Easter is a holiday that doesn't really affect you because I'm saved. I celebrate Easter. But what I want to ask you this morning, I want you to consider this. Maybe Easter is about a fresh start. You hear the term spring cleaning. Closets garages, cars. It brings a freshness. The flowers are brighter. The days are longer. The temperature is warmer. 
there's just something about spring. And spring is often people's favorite season because there's just something about starting all over. And I got to thinking about our Easter message and who I was going to be speaking today. And, and I thought that, you know what, coming out of a two-year pandemic and we've been oppressed and suppressed and we, we've lost loved ones and there's been people along the way that has lost the battle to COVID and there's been a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and we're coming into an Easter season in 2022 that I'm preaching that is a fresh start my friend somewhere in your life somewhere in your spirit somewhere in your relationships somewhere in your future somewhere on your job I think all of us can say you know what I need a fresh start I've been through a lot of things I've been carrying some weight I've been struggling along the way I'm I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to make it work. And I've just been waiting for Easter to get here. Why? Because Easter is a sign of spring, and spring is a sign of fresh starts. Maybe you need a personal spring cleaning in your life. Maybe in your home, not with the physical things, but maybe in the atmosphere or the spirit of your home. Maybe somebody that's listening to me this morning could use a spring cleaning in your marriage. Maybe some could say, I need a spring cleaning in my spirit, my attitude, my mind. I need a fresh anointing, as the song says, because my strength from yesterday is gone. It doesn't mean maybe I, I, I love God. I put Easter first. I don't put the Easter bunny in front of God. I don't put Easter eggs in front of God. I love God. But you know what, Pastor, to be honest with you, it's been a hard two years. And yes, I could use a fresh start. In fact, I deserve a fresh start if you want to get right down to it because I've struggled and I've tried to push on. And you just ought to be better glad that I'm here on Easter morning. Well, if you're going to word it that way, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> now, quit getting mad at me. We're glad you're here. But moving forward in your life, think about this with me for a minute. What area, don't tell nobody, okay? This is personal. This is private. What area do I need a fresh start in? You got it? And that's the area that I'm preaching to. That's the area that I'm speaking to. That's the area that I'm going to pray to in a moment. But you could be saved and holy and you could be almost angelic. But probably with what we have gone through globally and in America and all the disagreements and all the different opinions and all kinds of stuff from political to mass to boosters. And I don't want to even get in all that. I'm sorry I said that. But all I'm saying is I'm sick of it. I'm ready for some normalcy. Now, I'm ready for a normal life. I'm ready for a fresh start. And I thought, hey, Easter is a great time to launch into a fresh start. And when I realize what area I need a fresh start in, then I can identify that and I can pray about that and I can lean into that and God will help me. I'm here to tell you, my friend, that the area that you need a fresh start in, God is anxious and desirous to come into that area and bring some sunshine and make a difference. Why? Because that's what God does. God makes a difference in every situation and God prepare, prepares and God moves and God wins every situation. The church always wins. And so maybe I'm speaking to you this morning and you've got that one little area in your life that needs a fresh start. God's wanting to be a part of that. And God's wanting to do something in the spirit what does that mean, Pastor? That means that God's working on the inside of me. You see, we can re I've lived long enough. I can rearrange the pieces on the chessboard, but if I don't fix the inside of me, the pieces on the chessboard don't normally bring long-term stability of happiness and peace. It starts on the inside, and God says, I know that. Right. And although they wanted to crucify him, and we're celebrating Easter week, and in 50 days and about seven Sundays from now, we're going to celebrate and rejoice about Pentecost Sunday. And that's His Spirit coming back upon God's people, dwelling inside of us. The beautiful thing about the Spirit of God is it begins to repair me or help me or put me together from the inside out. You see, this is the difference between God's Spirit and a program. This is the difference between God's Spirit and a orchestrated steps. God works on the inside. Man, humanity, government, agencies, etc., they can only work on the outside. 
And I'm not minimizing that. But the real healing and the real relationship and the real connectivity with God comes from the inside. And I pastored long enough. When God begins to repair the inside, come on, somebody. When God begins to work on the inside, the outside begins to take care of itself because the root and the core and the heart and the mind and the spirit is what God begins to touch. And then I begin to make changes. Me, Why? God's making me a better person. God's making me whole. God's allowing me to forgive and forget. And I begin to put my life back together because God is starting from the inside working out thank you i heard up here that's good i wanted to say that myself but he beat me to it i don't think that sounds right when you tell yourself good preaching right somewhere i'm looking for the scripture that that don't sound right but at least i can amen amen him i can find that scripture but watch this. The Bible says, Mark said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What are you saying? I'm simply saying, what is in here? Peace, joy, love, happiness, righteousness. The Bible says this in the King James, in the Holy Ghost. Other translations would say in the Holy Spirit. But the beautiful thing about Easter, and you're here this morning, is that it's a fresh start. And maybe if you've got life kind of figured out and you're on the top of your game, you know what? We all went through two years of deep, dark valley. Two years ago, I preached Easter from this pulpit with nobody in here. I remember that Easter. But I think this is probably in the last two Easter's. This is the, the Easter now that we are all coming together and we realize the value of people. And we realize the value of the church and we realize the value of the pulpit and what's being preached over it. And God's simply saying to some people here this morning, hey, it's time for a fresh start. It's time that, that we reset and refocus and we renew. Why? Because old things are passed away. New things have become new. I'm preaching to somebody, and you need to hear me this morning. With this church, I, we, we want to help you restart, relaunch a brand new fresh start from where you were years ago, from where you were many years ago, to say, hey, God can change that. God can touch that. The power of Easter is here. The power of God's Spirit is here. And we are a Spirit-filled church, and we truly believe believe that God can change any situation. He can put any heart back together. He can repair any relationship. He can touch any mind. Why? Because the Bible tells me it's so. So I would say, parents, teach your children about the original stories from the Word of God. You see, I say, enjoy this life. Enjoy the journey. Just don't get desensitized by the world's definition of our holy events. And we realize that this is Easter. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all of his righteousness. And he said, these, shame, these, these things shall be added unto you. Here. You say, what things? The things that your heart desires when you put God first. Let me ask you a question. How many among us are living the life that we thought we would live when we thought about the future when we were little? You see, well, here's the problem. Life gets in the way of life. And things are dealt to us that I didn't sign up for this. It's almost like, I'm sorry to use this analogy, we're so close to Pachanga, but forgive me. It's almost like you're at the blackjack table. I assume I've never been at one. Come on, you ever heard of Google Images? Give me a break. You ever heard of YouTube? But I picture this. You're at the, hey... Give me another hit. Give me another hit. Hit me. Oh, see? Who who said that? Somebody get me the oil. Bring her up here. I'm going to preach on this side. This, This side's more holy. I perceive 
in my spirit. Okay, where, I, where I, I left myself at the blackjack table. Hit me. And they just keep dealing, as long as you tell me, you know, boom, boom, boom. But here's what life is all about. We're chugging along and we're fine. And then life hits me. Hey, I didn't say I need another card. I didn't say hit me. I didn't say gimme. And then there's another card laid on the table. And we look at that. And in some cases, that extra card could cause us to bust. Hey, I'm just trying to live life. I, I, things were fine until, how many of us could say, including myself, hey, things were great until, boom. Right, right. Kind of like, who invited these guys? I don't need you in my life. You don't get a chance. You don't get to choose which dog bites you. And so it's called life. So, Brother Foster, because I know life and I keep getting these hits or deal me, how do I work through this? How do we navigate and negotiate through the rough waters of life or the unexpected information that comes in our way? I'm saying that we need a fresh start. Maybe you've got a stack of cards on the table. Oh, hey, we're kind of into this right now. I learned on our trip. I never even played it or heard of it. But since I'm trying to learn Spanish, I embraced it. We, call a, we played a game called Mexican Train. What is that? In gringo layman terms, dominoes. I'm trying to be bilingual, but come on, the games are pushing it, right? I got to learn Mexican game. No, it's not about it's Mexican train. And if you play dominoes, anybody ever played dominoes? And you're you got to lay down, right? And I don't know. They I don't even know if this is even true. You, but you got the the um bo- the boneyard. Boneyard. Come on, say they say boneyard. I don't know. <laughs> So when you can't play, you keep picking up, right? And at some point, I'm learning, hey, excuse me, is it the one of the most dominoes win? (laughs) No, because I'm really killing it right now, guys. (laughs) Beginner's luck. Not really. You actually got to lay your dominoes down and get rid of them. But Sister Rosetta, forever, I was picking up. Can't play. Can't play can't play. I don't like this game now. (laughs) Can't play. I quit. (laughs) But sometimes life does us that way. And we look at our table and we're stacked with cards or dominoes. And so, you know, when I started out, I had less dominoes. Can we go back to the beginning of the game? Nope. You just do your best to get rid of them. Then what? Add up the points. So the way the most points wins? No. I don't think I'm going to win. And I thought life sometimes is like dominoes. Hey, hey watch this. Oh, Mexican train. I was playing it in the South, and they actually called it chicken foot. <laughs> Whatever. Chicken foot. Is this the same as Mexican train? I, I had to Google. I'm, I'm dead. I, I Googled. What's the difference between chicken foot and Mexican train? Basically, same thing. Well, I guess in Georgia, Brother Foster, it's chicken foot. In Alabama, it's chicken and dumplings. And not a, come on, for the record, I made that one up, but I, it's pretty good, huh? Hey, you want to play chicken and dumplings? I'd rather eat them. I'm not playing nothing, man. Don't you play with my chicken and dumplings. Anyway. Back from the comedy show to my message. <laughs> so life is kind of deals you things that I didn't ask for this. I, I didn't know this was going to happen in my marriage. I didn't know this was going to happen to my kid. I didn't know this was going to happen. I, 
I didn't sign up for this, God. In fact, I didn't even sign up at all. <laughs> Who signed me up? Mind your own business. Don't sign me up for this stuff. No, it's life. So how many among us, again with my question, realize, you know what? I could use a fresh start. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all his righteousness and these things shall be added unto you. Someone shout unto me. Amen. That's personalizing the scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto me. So really, the fresh start starts with God. The retooling, the rearranging, the recategorizing of life, of my dominoes, my cards. I, I learned this, Brother Foster, in Mexican train dominoes. Well, you're from Georgia, so let's do chicken foot. <laughs> the rest of the team players will let me just keep picking up as long as I keep picking up. It's like they don't even try to stop you. Are you sure you don't want it? You sure you want that? No, I'm not sure. But I can't play. I'm stuck. Pick up. And watch this. When you can't play on your own life in dominoes, you put a train out. And what does that mean? Everybody else can play on my life, on my dominoes. Hey, don't, I don't need your dominoes. Get off my train. No, but the game allows them. They could dump all their dominoes on mine and go out. And life could have gotten so bad at some point with you that you felt like people were adding dominoes to you. Unsolicited. It's like the dealer at Pechanga deals the whole deck. How many cards are in the deck? See me after church. You're in trouble. I'm sorry I set you up, but I knew some of you were out there. See me after church. We got to talk more about, sal more about that than salvation right now. What about baptism? Forget it. They know how many cards are in the deck. Okay, 52? So it's like the dealer just keeps going, ch 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 hang on. Ch and it seems like in some of your lives, the cards kept coming. How do I stop this? I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is how you can manage it. What I do know is that there could be a fresh start from this disarray of cards. And on several times in our Mexican train, I had a host of dominoes. And I'm counting up the points, Brother Foster. Ooh, 87. Whew. That hurts. So what we do, we, we play it again. I'm going to redeem myself. Maybe I can win and they get 87 points. And then we settle the score. And you keep playing these rounds, hoping to win and bounce back or mitigate your points. Are you with me? And life's kind of that way, but the, the, the catalyst is Jesus, the, the Savior, the Spirit. And I feel like I'm preaching to the host of you this morning, and maybe you're online and you're listening. And you say, you know what? My life is representative of a table full of dominoes. What happened? I just couldn't play. I, I was in the bad spot. I wasn't in the right place. It never materialized. I did this. I should have did that. I should have said no. I accidentally said yes. And now look, 42 years old, and I, I, the deck is stacked against me. No, no, wait a minute. This is Easter. Hmm. This is a spirit-filled church that the people become filled with the spirit. 
And it allows us to move forward to play another game. And maybe, maybe I can win this domino hand. Maybe I can get a new set of cards dealt to me. And I'm going to play them different this time. You see, pastors, we call that a fresh start. Easter allows us to reset and refocus and recommit our energy. God, with you, I'm going to figure this out. God, with you, I'm going to make progress. God, with you, I'm going to start to climb out of the valley. I'm going to take a step, God, and I'm going to take another step. With you, God, I'm going to have a fresh start, and it's going to be different this time. It's going to be more sustainable. It's going to be more long-term. It's going to be more lasting because, God, I've never really leaned into you like that. I never understood, and today is Easter, God, and I want to remember this day, and I'm going to start fresh. And at that point, ladies and gentlemen, is when God descends down to comfort and be with you, to give you wisdom and healing and virtue. One writer called it the bomb of Gilead. Bombs and lotions to help heal. To help restore. That's what bombs and lotions do. And God says, I I can just see it in the spirit. God is wanting to bring some bomb of healing to people but God I got all these dominoes hey don't worry about that you just focus on me right now get your eyes off the dominoes I got 38 cards here God on the table get your eyes off the cards look up here a little bit look at me look at me son look at me daughter he's saying We'll address that later, but let me help you right now. Let me step down into your current situation. That's what God's wanting to do to every one of us. The Spirit of the Lord is here. If you're able to stand with me this morning, could you? I'm going to pray for us, and I'm going to ask God, and I'm going to ask you to lend an ear to each other. I, I think if we, if we peel back the covers and open the curtains on all of our lives, we can say, here's an area I need a fresh start in, right here. I think if we're honest with ourselves, there's some areas that I, I, I need the bomb of Gilead. This isn't healing right. This is painful. This, this is irritating at times. It didn't heal just right. Somewhere in life, God's wanting to start fresh with you. And, you know, it's reciprocal. What That means that it goes both ways. It's reciprocal. That I want to start with God, and God wants to start with me. And I need a fresh touch and a fresh start. And God wants to give me a fresh touch and a fresh start. It's not all about God. It's not all about me. It's about a partnership. To where I lean into God, and the power of the resurrection covers me. And I begin to see some changes begin to see some progress. I begin to feel some healing. It's called a fresh start. Thank God for Easter. Easter is a good holiday. I want to pray for us, and as I pray, if you would like the pastoral staff to anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith upon you, I'm going to ask you to come. The altar is down here, and, and let us partner with you and help establish that fresh start already been mentioned next week we'll be starting a sermon series I'll be preaching called Renewed talks about renewing some areas of your life I want to invite you back like they've already mentioned and part of the fresh start for some of you hear me is probably just getting back here next Sunday you say well I don't normally go on Sundays well maybe that's a fresh start I I got other things going on and I catch up on my rest on Sundays. Well, maybe a fresh start for you is, hey, let me me get down to that church. Let me invest an hour and a half and see if something won't change. 
All, all I'm saying is that this week, God's going to show every one of us the area in our life that needs a fresh start. But when he shows us, I have to act and do something. I have to respond. And again, the lowest entry point of a fresh start is coming back here next Sunday. And in my heart, everybody qualifies. Let me pray for us. If you want special prayer, come down as I'm praying. You can slip down. All the heads are bowed. The eyes are closed. Let's respect one another. Lord Jesus, we thank you for an amazing Easter weekend. Your spirit, your power. But I pray, God, that as you speak fresh starts into lives and you inspire somebody, maybe in some areas, God, you challenge us to do bigger and better and greater, that we would receive the challenge. Because with your spirit, all things are possible. With your spirit, all things are so. God, in lives, I would pray for healing this morning. In some areas, I'd pray for a rearranging of a schedule for next Sunday morning, God. That's somebody's fresh start. They just need to grab it. I pray for a marriage, God, that's been fractured through all this two years of COVID and finances. I pray for moms, God, and children with school. I pray for every every area, every aspect of life, God, that you would scan the areas of our lives and help us start fresh by the power of the infilling of your spirit, by repentance, by baptizing and washing away our sins. I pray for the viewers online. I pray for everyone here today, God. We receive your spirit. I receive the spoken word. Speak into homes. Bring power and comfort, God. Bring hope. In the name of Jesus, I pray the prayer. In Jesus' name, these are so. Praise God. Praise God. The pastoral team is here. Would you come and let us, let us anoint you? God bless you for coming. All we're doing is saying, God, give them a fresh start. We're anointing with oil and we're believing. Lord, give them a fresh start. Give them a fresh start. And you know what that means. Anybody need a special anointing? Yes. Come on. Happy Easter to everyone. This is a great weekend. Let it go beyond this weekend, though, my friend. Fresh starts. Hallelujah. Fresh starts. Fresh starts, God. Hallelujah.
want to thank you for joining us today and believe with you that God has spoken to you through the sermon and worship. If you have decided today, you know what, I need to give my life to God or recommit to Him, we would love to connect with you, pray with you, and be here with you on your journey in strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ. Whether that be through a Bible study, baptism, or striving to receive the infilling of the Spirit, we want to connect with you to see the amazing things God is doing and going to do in your life. Or if you have any questions, we want to welcome you to our online family. Go to truevine.live and click connect. If you're worshiping with us on YouTube, just click that subscribe button. Or if you're on Facebook, please like our page. Go ahead right now, comment, and then click the share button. And if this ministry has blessed you, partner with us by giving to God's kingdom here at Truevine. You can give a one-time gift or a recurring donation. The giving options are coming up right after this. We look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday. God bless. Thank you.